Good day everyone. How are you doing? Take a look at this case. This isn't a case done in India or in Turkey. The hair transplant was done elsewhere. With the common assumption that hair transplants done outside of North America or Europe if you may are subpar, I want to touch today on a contentious issue. The continued often unfounded criticisms that some North American surgeons hurl at patients choosing to get the hair transplant done abroad, whether in India, Turkey or any other global destination. Ironically, the criticisms hurled at international surgeons often mirror the flaws in these critics' own practices, sometimes rooted more in insecurities than in actual concern for the patient. For patients today, the world has become a smaller place, a global village. It is easy for them to travel anywhere for a cosmetic procedure that they wish to get. They no longer wish to be bound by the borders when seeking top-notch affordable clinics for the hair transplant. Yet these practitioners would want you to believe otherwise, using scare tactics to dissuade patients from making informed, independent, well thought of choices based on due diligence and research. So let's get right into it. I will soon walk you through this patient's story. A case of a hair transplant done in USA a few years back who had come requesting for a hair transplant revision because the hair transplant was done in the most shoddy manner. And this wasn't a hair transplant done in India or a hair transplant done in Turkey, mind you. In contrast to the diligent work that Indian surgeons, Indian hair transplant surgeons put in, in showcasing their results, many North American surgeons on the other hand seem to be spending time casting aspersions on hair transplants performed in India, hair transplants performed in Turkey. Their social media platforms and the forums that they inhabit are littered with paid reviews. And let's be frank, shills are hired by the dime to a dozen to malign the work of doctors who do hair transplant, who do honest hair transplants in India or maybe in Turkey. Don't get biased by what I say. Ask yourself, how many times have you seen on the internet, have you seen on YouTube, have you seen on Instagram, North American hair transplant surgeons openly displaying their work? Not very often. Instead, they default and create PR videos like Doctor reacts to a hair transplant done in Turkey. Doctor reacts to a hair transplant done in India. Doctor reacts to a hair transplant done in a celebrity abroad. Now what shit is this? Here in India, and even in Turkey to a great extent, doctors have not yet started responding to these vicious videos. Baseless claims in most cases. We have simply been busy doing our work, unaffected. After all, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. They want you to believe that the only reliable hair transplants are done in North America, while anything else is definitely inferior. If I may ask, are they God gifted? Are they born with the skill of FU hair transplant? Or is it racial supremacy they're talking about? They'll say a hair transplant done in Turkey is a poor choice and that done in India is a gamble. Let's be real friends, which century are these surgeons living in? And this rhetoric, I'm not saying everybody says this, but there is a big coterie of doctors in North America who make these tall statements, but they themselves fall short of following the basic tenets, the basic principles of hair restoration surgery. This video is to show a mirror to them. In truth, the success of a hair transplant does not at all hinge upon the geographical location of a doctor treating, the racial type of the doctor treating you. It's determined on the other hand by the doctor's skill, experience, and most importantly, the doctor's integrity. North American surgeons may criticize standards abroad, yet many lack the experience, the case volumes, the hands-on experience that allow surgeons in India and elsewhere to excel in this field. And that's why patients come to us. Experience sharpens technique, hones skill, promotes meticulous planning, allows us to be better at decision-making, which case to take up for surgery and which case to stay away from, and prevents long-term complications. Experience also gives us an insight how to achieve long-term hair transplant results. After all, a hair transplant should not be just a flash in the pan. See a good result after six months to 12 months, and then it fades away, like morning dew at first light. So this is the case report, a patient who underwent an FU hair transplant a few years ago in North America. The donor area, as you can see, is left with glaring shotgun scars, a galaxy of visible marks scattered across the scalp beyond the bounds of the safe donor zone. Now, what is this? This is not just cosmetically unappealing, 
but speaks of the poor technique, bad planning, throwing caution to the wind. And this has happened, my dear friends, in North America. And this isn't the first such case I have repaired coming from this geographical location, North America. One of the fundamental principles of a few hair transplant is to respect the donor zone. Whether you respect doctors doing hair transplant in India or Turkey is another matter. We are talking about the scalp donor zone, respect for the scalp donor zone. The area where hair follicles are naturally resistant to DHT to future hair loss. Yet in this case, the doctor doing the surgery harvested grafts from an area high above that has now thinned and has balded, has become part of the bald crown. Imagine this is the area from where the grafts were harvested. And if someone told you that this procedure was done in Turkey, most of you would not hesitate but believe it. So this case at hand displays poor management of the donor area, poor understanding of the hair transplant process and has compromised the patient's aesthetics and more importantly, future graft availability. What is most pertinent, most frustrating is that much of the criticism of FUE especially concerning scarring or donor mismanagement has historically originated from North America. The very place where now we know that these issues are now far too common. Ironically, many of these doctors lack the experience that most Indian surgeons have today. Indian surgeons acquire more experience given the vast volume of cases that they handle today in India. In India today, individual surgeons handle hundreds of cases in a year independently done procedures. And if you see it at a national level, the whole picture is much more vast. In India today, individual surgeons doing hair transplants themselves manage 400 to 600 cases in a year on average. And on a broader canvas, on a broader national canvas, almost around 8 million cases are done in India every year. And this number is rising by 20% every subsequent year. So you can see the humongous experience that Indian surgeons have in doing hair transplant surgery. Experience that not even doctors and very few doctors in Turkey do hair transplants themselves have in this field. This immense experience gives us the opportunity to refine our techniques, understand diverse hair types, Indian, Asian, Caucasian, and deliver results case after case that exceed global standards. Now let's be honest, poor surgical standards, substandard technique, or inadequate hygiene can be found most anywhere in the world. There is no country you can label as an underdeveloped country today, a third world country. Things have changed a lot in the past 50 years, which many surgeons in the Western world may not want to accept. If you exclude these poor examples of technique about skill and hygiene, reputable hair transplant clinics in India consistently deliver superior results compared to many North American counterparts. And this is not a claim driven by bias or vendetta. The evidence is freely available for you to see online. In closing, before North American doctors criticize work done abroad, and especially in India, it's high time they reflect on their own practices. The real question after all is not where the surgery takes place, but the surgeon's skill, the surgeon's experience. And in India, let me assure you, at reputable clinics run by plastic surgeons, run by dermatologists, where the doctor does the procedure himself. We take pride in delivering ethical, precise and consistent results, safe results for our patients. Results that last a long time. So that was the talk for the day. If you have any questions about hair transplant, hair loss treatment for men and women, do let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you at the soonest. Have a nice day and God bless you.